and we're back. <laughs> so we started off with some really great information. I wanted to come back and be live with you to help you with your national exam. We did really well with California. We're still continuing to do California. So far, all the people that we've helped pass the state exam have passed the California state exam. Now, the other thing that I wanna mention, not just the fact that we're doing national, but I'm totally ready to do national because I have the book the book on all the information you need to pass the exam. I also have it all, like I showed in the previous video, I have it all marked up and ready to go so I can explain everything to you. I'm gonna be doing it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as much as I possibly can. I'm gonna start live at 9.30, and I'm gonna go for approximately 20 to 30 minutes. No longer than 30, hopefully, and no less than 10, and we're gonna get you all the information you need to pass the national exam. Once we get done with the national exam, I'm gonna start working with Texas and then Georgia, and then we'll throw in some Arkansas because I know we have a follower in Arkansas who's dying for me to get some of that information out to you in Arkansas. So once we get all the national information out and requested states that you guys want me to help you with, then I'm gonna go ahead and help you push towards your broker's license. So in California, you have to have your real estate license, your salesperson's license for at least two years or you have to have a master's degree with a major or a minor in real estate to get your broker's license. Now getting the broker's license gives you a lot more opportunities. There it goes. I don't know why I keep freezing. It must be that somebody's doo 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 making me freeze. So unfortunately it keeps freezing. I don't know why. Um, sometimes when you go live, things happen that you can't control. Um, but anyway, so if you have a state that you are specifically in and you need help, what you can do is go ahead and um, watch the national information and then let me know what state you're working on. So first I'm gonna do Georgia and Texas. The main reason I'm doing Texas before Georgia is I have the information in this book. So this book is for the national exam and the Texas exam. Then I'm gonna hit Georgia because I need to get my license in Georgia. I have people there that want me to help them. And then Arkansas will be next because we have a loyal follower who's been following me, I think forever. She's been subscribing and she pops up every so often and she's from Arkansas. So we're gonna do Arkansas and any other state that you guys are seriously having a problem passing your state exam, feel free to go ahead and contact us in the comment box. And um, the thing is, is with this book, it not only has um, the information that you need, but it also has some practice questions and answers. Now I realize in some states and on the national exam, you might have to do some numbers, you might have to do some calculations. Well, I'm an expert on that because I used to teach, hello, you're back, I'm gonna do Arkansas for you. And um, you have to know the numbers and you have to know financing, which I really believe California should add the financing to it because quite honestly, there's a lot to do with real estate and there's a lot of stuff that you really have to know. And if you're walking from one home to another home with a client and they go, you know, Sharon, I really love that last house, but then the house before that house, like two houses ago, can you tell me the difference in the price or the difference in the taxes? Or does that one have Melrose and this one doesn't? So you have to know a lot more than just passing the sales exam. And I had a new agent with me the other day and we were gonna go talk to her client. And he had a specific number that he wanted to, shall I say, net out, net out. So we have gross and we have net. So gross is you sell the house for $700,000 and that's how much you sold it for. But you're not getting $700,000 because you owe your bank $200,000. You're not getting $500,000 because you have to pay for closing costs and you have to pay for escrow and you have to pay for title. What can you in trouble in real estate? What can you, what does that mean? What can you in trouble in real estate? Ellie, I need, a, I need more clarification on your question. What can you do to get in trouble in real estate? Is that what you were gonna say? So I have had my license since 1986 and I've only had one lawsuit and it was me suing my seller. So what can you do to get in trouble? Um, one of the main things you can do is I've always, so I was raised in California and California is a lot different than most other states, especially in the South and in the East. And in California, we were brought up to be colorblind and we are brought up to make sure we treat everybody equally. So um, the color of your skin, your nationality, any of that, shouldn't it shouldn't have an effect on how your real estate agent's treating you. 
And one of the biggest problems we have is people treating people differently because they're not the same as they are. And regardless of anything, we need to treat our clients with respect, dignity, and you should totally be colorblind. And right now, especially in California, um, the implicit bias training is number one. You need to make sure you have that. Finally taking my exam Thursday, Maria, yay, where are you taking it? God, that took a little bit of a while, huh, Maria? We gotta make sure that you pass it. So we are having our class. Our California exam prep starts tonight at 6 p.m. and it goes on until 9.30 p.m. and it's Monday through Thursday. You're gonna be in La Palma? Oh my gosh, on Thursday? Let me see what we can do to meet up maybe. That would be awesome, right? I, I have been thinking about going down to La Palma and handing out some of my cards to make sure that those people who don't pass know how to find me, right? So um, we're doing the class um, Monday through Thursday. Maria, have you taken our class? And then we're going to do it again Saturday and Sunday. So it'll be Monday through Thursday from 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And then Saturday and Sunday from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And taking our class, all our, all our students are passing. And then our broker students are passing also. And I really want to make sure that you guys know that strive for the best. Go for what you can do. What happens if your license gets taken when you get in trouble? Well, if your license get for, so first of all, you have to do some pretty bad things to get your license taken when you get in trouble. A lot of times it depends on how long you've had your license, if you did it on purpose, if it was a mistake. So there's, there's fraud and then there's constructive fraud and those are on the test. And so the question she had is what happens if you get in trouble and you lose your license? Well, many times it depends on what you did and how extensive it was and, and, and how and if you hurt a consumer. If you hurt a consumer, it's worse than if you didn't hurt a consumer. Like, let's say that you um, had your advertising wrong and it was a blind ad and the blind ad didn't show your broker's license, you know, who you're working for. So a blind ad does not show your broker. So if you work for Keller Williams, it has to say Keller Williams on your advertisement. If it doesn't say that on there, then somebody reports you, then the Department of Real Estate is going to contact you and they're going to talk to you about it. And I had one student, I saw his advertising all the time and I kept telling him, you're gonna get in trouble, you're gonna get in trouble. And he didn't listen to me and somebody did turn him in and the Department of Real Estate reached out to him. And because he was a newer agent and he really didn't understand or so he said he didn't understand that he was doing something wrong, then the Department of Real Estate just basically, they're not here to take your license away. They're here to correct you if you have a problem. Now, if you did something that, that, okay, so advertising incorrectly would not have hurt the consumer, okay, in a way. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have made them financially lose any money. But if you hurt a consumer and they financially lose money, then not only will the Department of Real Estate come after you and have a nice talk with you, you'll probably have a hearing. And so will your, your broker. So if you do something wrong, your broker did something wrong too because you're basically one in the same. And you, so your broker should be guiding you so that you don't get in trouble. The only time you're gonna get sued financially and you could lose part of your, anything that you have, your assets, is if you hurt a client to a point where they've lost money and then they sue you civilly. And if they sue you in civil court, then if you lose, you're gonna to have to pay it back. What if you don't have enough money to pay them back? Well, the Department of Real Estate in California, now I know you're in Arkansas, but in California, we have a recovery account. Gosh, oh my gosh, on this video right here, I have given you so much information that's even on the California state exam. The recovery account, the blind ad, fraud, actual fraud versus um, constructive fraud. So let me answer all those really quick because I didn't mention what they are. So constructive fraud is negligence. You didn't know that you did something wrong. Now, if you feel that you don't know something before you do something wrong, talk to your broker. Your broker is supposed to be there for you, okay? So that's constructive fraud, negligence, and you didn't get help from your broker. So he should be held responsible, and he will go to the trial with you to the DRE, depending on what state you're in and how they handle it, okay? Fraud, actual fraud. If you do actual fraud, so the difference between constructive fraud and actual fraud is constructive fraud, you didn't know what you didn't know, so it was negligence. Actual fraud is you intended to deceive a person. Now, if you intended to deceive a person on purpose and they lost money, then that's where civil court comes to, where they're gonna sue you in civil court. Now, let's say that they sue you and you don't have the money to pay them. In California, we have the recovery account. So I've hit on constructive fraud, 
actual fraud, um, the recovery account, and what else did I hit on? I hit on something else. So all this information, every time I talk, what Arlene says I do is I drop gold nuggets. And those gold nuggets will be on your state exam. So what I'm telling you guys is I'm going to help you whether you're in California or not. So over there in Arkansas, we're going to help you out. So the book I'm going to be using is from Champion School of Real Estate. Now they're probably, hopefully I can get a hold of them and let them know I'm going to be using their book. Um, what are the fun things, fun event that real estate agents can go to attend? I'll get to that in a second. So this is the book I'm going to be using. I'm going to contact them, make sure it's okay with them. And um, if it's not, we'll find another national exam book. But I'm going to start with this one. I don't see why they'd be upset that I'm sharing their book. The last people that I used their book, which was um, Walt Hubbard, I believe, his book went from $18 a book to $85 a book because on Amazon, they sold like over 300 of them because I was using their book. So I'm going to talk to these people as soon as I can, make sure they know I'm using their book. Um, the fun things that we can, that we can um, go to as a real estate agent. Well, it depends on what kind of fun things you're talking about. So if you get involved in real estate and you get involved in your association, once you've been involved with them for like two years, it, every association has a different time frame. But Tri-Counties Association, which is the one I belong to, it was two years before you could get on the actual board. So as the board, there's going to be anywhere from probably, depending on the size of the board, six to 15 directors. And what the directors do is um, we do a lot of work. We make sure the association's running. We make sure we have enough finances to do everything that we do. We go to community events. We go to chamber meetings with other cities and we go to... Um, mostly the cities that you're in if you're with your local board. Once you step out and you go to your state board, your state board, like in California, we have legislation day in Sacramento. And we're gonna be in legislation day. It's gonna be happening at the end of April, beginning of May. And we're gonna be in Sacramento. And then as a um, California director, I get to go to Washington, D.C. and meet with senators and talk about housing events. So there's a lot of things that we get to go to. And usually it's your community events. Like we went to the prayer, be pre bleh, I can't talk, the prayer breakfast um, a couple weeks ago. And at the prayer be breakfast, God, that's a hard one to say, prayer breakfast. Um, we got to meet the guy who was the speaker and he had a book and he was speaking about the fact that he was um, in the mafia and he was one of the top guys in the mafia and he told us how he changed his life. So there's all kinds of things that you get to go to and get to, you know, your, your association will sponsor. Like our association sponsors a lot of golf tournaments for charity. And what we've done is we've opened it up to all of our members and we said, okay, in our membership, if you golf, let us know because you'll be able to go to a golf tournament for free. Normally, when you go to a golf tournament, there was something flying around in front of me. Normally, when you go to a charity golf tournament, it's going to cost you like at least $200 to golf and to, ha and to enjoy the event and have the dinner. And, and the only thing we ever have to pay for is our raffle tickets. So we're busy all the time. I could show you my calendar. If you want to reach out to me, just go ahead and write something in my comments and we'll connect. And on my videos, you see my email, my phone number, and all that all over the place. Arlene just hates when I give up my phone number. So if you go to my TikTok, why it's still there, um, my TikTok has the phone number to reach us. And that usually is my phone number. And my TikTok is SS, like 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 SS, like a, like a boat, right? Because um, my name's Sharon Suzanne, SS Butler 8. And then my Instagram is... Sharon Butler dot R E stands for real estate R E pro and you can find me and follow me there and you can find me on my Instagram. I'm not allowed to say a lot about what's happened with the National Association of Realtors, but I guarantee you guys real estate will always be an amazing career. And if you're involved with your association and you go to the meetings and you learn how to use the buyer's contracts, you're going to be good because buyers will always need us. We're there to hold their hands. We're there to make sure they're making the right decision. We're, we have a fiduciary duty to them to make sure they don't get them, you know, a house that may be a money pit. And there's, if you, if you go on the information, I don't know if you guys can get the information, but I can get it. I know it's on our Tri-County website. So it's Tri-Counties Association of Realtors. Um, there's a list of like 178 things 
that buyer's agents do for them and 180 things that seller's agents do as long as we as long as Miss Sharon is leader on my board. Aw, but I'm not in Arkansas. So right now, I, you, you did have to say that because I will admit that I am currently the president of Tri-Counties Association. And if you wanna get the information about what realtors do for buyers and what realtors do for sellers, I will download it. And if you want me to email it to you, I will email it to you. So you guys, I'm gonna be coming to you Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a minimum of, let's call it 15 minutes, up to 30 minutes. And the reason I'm doing every other day is because I want you to study what you learn. So on Monday, after you learn my information, I want you to study it and know it before I come back on Wednesday morning. And then on Wednesday morning, I'm gonna teach you, hello, Dara, how you doing? Good morning. So, and then on Wednesday, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to learn what I teach you and then study it and know it by Thursday. That way, if I do it every other day, if there's something that you don't remember or you don't understand, you can always pop on and put it in the comments and then I can answer your questions, especially if I answer your questions before we go on to learning more information. So I'm excited to be back and to be live more often. It's just uh, being president of my association, I'm traveling a lot and I'm also taking care of my mom who is an amazing mother who is actually the one who has motivated me. I wrote my, I started writing my book that goes with our movie. The movie's already written, the screenplay's already written. Um, well, still, my leader, aw, I'm gonna be helping you all the way. I also, um, we do do coaching and help you guys learn about how you need to present yourself. If you notice, I'm centered in my camera and you know, nothing bothers me more than anything is when somebody gets on and they look like they just woke up and their camera is up under their chin. I mean, you guys were professionals, we have to be professional. So we do have where you could call and make an appointment to have us mentor you uh, for a half hour at a time. So you guys, I'll see you, today is Monday, I'll see you on Wednesday. Make sure that you're ready to learn. Now the book I'm gonna be using, um, but before you buy this book or go anywhere to buy it, um, let me contact them and see if there's a way that you guys can buy it at a decent cost. And if you don't have it, remember, I'm going to be going slow through the information. And when you're watching it on YouTube, you can rewind it and listen to it slower. So I'll make sure I go slow enough so you can catch all the information. Awesome. All right, you guys. See you later. See you Wednesday morning at 930. All right. Bye. If I can shut it off.